Every year or two, there's a total eclipse of the sun somewhere in the world. If you've ever seen this awesome sight, you likely saw beautiful silver streamers stretching out from the sun. That's the solar corona, the sun's outermost layer, which only becomes visible when the bright inner disk of the sun is blocked. The sun emits more than this visible light. Charged particles are always racing out in all directions from the sun's corona. This outflow of particles that immerses everything in the solar system is called the solar wind. The behavior of the solar corona and the solar wind are phenomena that continue to offer a compelling scientific puzzle. How can the solar wind speed up as it moves away from the sun? How can the temperature of the corona be millions of degrees higher than the layers beneath it? In the 1970s, NASA spacecraft discovered that tons of material could be blasted from the corona into outer space, disrupting the continuous outflow of the solar wind. These are solar storms that we now call coronal mass ejections, or CMEs for short. If a CME is directed toward Earth, it can be dangerous for satellites, astronauts, and power grids. The storm's disruption to Earth's protective magnetic field can also create beautiful auroral displays. How can we better understand and learn to predict these events? NASA has flown a wide variety of missions to observe solar activity and its impacts on Earth from different perspectives in our solar system, including Earth's orbit. These heliophysics missions study the sun and the region of space extending far beyond, called the heliosphere. Following the dream of a remarkable scientist named Eugene Parker, a NASA spacecraft is flying closer to the sun than any mission before. Zooming by the sun at a speed of 430,000 miles an hour, or over 190 kilometers per second, Parker Solar Probe is the fastest moving object ever made by humans. This episode of Science Through Shadows focuses on the Parker Solar Probe, the first mission designed to allow humanity to literally touch the sun. How close does the Parker Solar Probe get to the Sun? Imagine that the nearly 100 million miles between the Earth and the Sun were represented by a soccer field. If the Earth is at one end of the field, the Sun would be roughly a yard or meter in diameter at the other end. And at closest approach, Parker Solar Probe flies to within the goal box. In this scale model, the Parker spacecraft would be smaller than a blade of grass, smaller than the nucleus within a cell of that blade. In fact, smaller than the diameter of a strand of DNA. As Parker flies through the sun's outer corona, the probe's scientific instruments can directly measure the particles and magnetic fields it encounters down to the scale of meters. Special cameras can also make close-up images of the solar wind and solar storms as they begin their journey away from the sun. The sun is mostly made of hydrogen, but it's so hot, the gases exist as plasma. What's plasma? Plasma is a state of matter that is produced when a gas gets so hot that its electrons are knocked loose. For example, Hydrogen has a proton at its center and an electron orbiting around it. In a plasma, particles fly apart and you have positively and negatively charged gas. Plasmas are abundant in stars, like our sun, but they also occur here on Earth. Lightning creates plasma in the air. The gas in a neon sign is plasma. In fact, the sun's corona and solar wind are also plasma. Because plasmas are charged and affected by magnetism, 
The corona and solar wind are bent into intriguing shapes by the sun's strong magnetic field. The sun's magnetic field threads through the plasma and produces these amazing patterns. By flying within the sun's corona, Parker Solar Probe is measuring the detailed behavior of solar magnetic fields and their impact on how energy from inside the sun transforms into heating and accelerating the corona. We launched Parker Solar Probe to solve three main mysteries. One of them is the coronal heating. The, coronal, uh, the solar corona is over 300 times hotter than the solar surface. And we don't know why that, uh, that happens. The other thing is what we call the acceleration of the solar wind. It, it has to do how that boiling gas in the solar corona escapes the solar gravity. And the third one, it goes without saying, is space weather. And it is related to explosive events on the sun, like flares and coronal mass ejection, and how they accelerate these, these particles to almost the speed of light. And Parker Solar Probe is getting us the closest ever to understand this phenomenon. It might be counterintuitive that Parker Solar Probe is doing most of its science in the shadow. And it's doing it in the shadow of the heat shield. The heat shield, which is the umbrella-like structure on top of the spacecraft, is what enabled Parker Solar Probe to be a mission flying around the sun. Without it, we wouldn't have a mission at all. Other missions are always propellant thirsty. We have enough propellant for Parker Solar Probe to go for another 100 years. And with all that, the science data that Parker Solar Probe is returning to us, it's so loaded with new phenomena that we didn't even know exist. And that will serve many generations to come. And that will make Parker Solar Probe a mission for the ages. Our next episode of Science Through Shadows features another NASA mission called PUNCH, the polarimeter to unify the corona and heliosphere. PUNCH involves four spacecraft in orbit around Earth. PUNCH is designed to observe the entirety of the inner heliosphere from the region of the corona that Parker is flying through all the way out to where the solar wind touches our world. Remember that soccer field? PUNCH can see it all.